actually like learn your lines if you're like right like before right, the scene. Oh my god! But on it by by the and I'm like that now. I mean, I can do it so you fast; it's retarded. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's just because you have to. And the other thing is, I think everybody's got a phenomenal. Like I was an English major, so I, I remember poems. I yeah. used to sing, so you remember songs. So I mean, I had yeah. that facility anyway. Yeah. But when you get put in a situation where you have to yeah. every day, you learn that you can. Yeah. Whereas most exactly. people, if they said, well, I've got five pages to memorize, mm -hmm. their mindset is, I can't. So they can't. Right. Because they're going to be stepping on their toes while they try. Yeah. For me, if I look, I know I can. Yeah. I have three years of mm -hmm. successful experience uh, being able to, to do it under yeah. pressure and, and figure it out. So it's just my mindset is I can do it. I he can, can memorize huge chunks of dialogue, like really quick. We'll, we'll, I'll help him read through his lines for auditions sometimes, and yeah. it's just like it's mind-boggling. And then you know, then you go to leave for the audition, and he can't find his keys. <laughs> <laughs> I have a terrible memory for everything. That's fine. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Now, We're, from what I've read, it, it seems that a lot of things um, happen to you by accident. Like at first, you wanted to be a hockey player, a professional yes. hockey player, right? And you yeah. got badly injured. Yeah, I got my kidney knocked out. Yeah. Want to see that? <laughs> Look at that scar. Look at that. It's a yeah. scene from Jaws. Anybody got a scar bigger man? <laughs> Richard? Anna? <Anything? laughs> no. All right. So we'll call that settled. Okay. So then yeah. all of a sudden you went into acting because of that? By accident? I can't remember. No, yeah, uh, there was something by accident. Well, I got, well, this was an accident. But, yeah. Um, and then, then you're no, I went into, I went into writing. I went into, I, I used to read a lot and I went into writing. Yeah. And I uh, went to university. Oh, what the accent was, I saw Apocalypse Now. Okay. Because I was, uh, I wanted to write. I wanted to be a writer. And then my buddy, I was tutoring this guy in, uh, in poetry. Mm -hmm. And he was a filmmaker. So he, every time I mentioned the, the, sort of the use of imagery or metaphor in poems, he was like, oh, that's like Kubrick and Bowman and oh. the spaceship. So he was telling me film metaphors. Yeah. So he took me to see Apocalypse Now at the Senate Yeah. And I, I couldn't speak for three hours after that. I mean, it blew me away. So the, I made a movie within a year of that. Mm -hmm. I wrote and, uh, made a movie with my friend, this guy. And that was it. Then I started writing and directing. And acting, I can't. I think it's because I acted in my own movies because no one else would. That's the acting thing. Just became like I have this movie I've written. Yeah. I want to direct it, and I am going to act in it because yeah. somebody has to. Yeah. That's how the acting happened. Yeah. And then Sweating Bullets just uh, was because I didn't sell a script in a year and a half, and I went. You know, I had an agent just said, I gotta get some acting. And then you turned down um, a show called Scoop? Oh, uh, yeah. And I was uh, 6,000 in debt. Yeah. And I did what all out of work uh, artists do I went golfing. <laughs> and right. I found out, I did two auditions in the same week. Uh, and the other one, I almost got two of us. Anyway, so they called me, I was golfing, and they, uh, some guy ran out from the clubhouse and said it was an emergency. And they were offering me a, a role, but I had just. Uh, audition for Sweaty Bullets All right. as well. I um, didn't know yeah. how it went, but I just wanted to wait. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I turned it down. I had hard money that would have paid my debt right away. Yeah. Or I had this thing, you can go to LA, you're against four of the guys, and you know, whatever. So I, I chose to take the risk and it worked out. Why do you think you chose that? Like, it was just like a voice you know inside of you? Or? Yeah, it was a really stupid decision. <laughs> uh, I remember my dad, because I had gone to him and asked him for some money. He was a banker, right? Logical guy. <laughs> And he, yeah. He wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't yeah. impressed at the time. Yeah, it wasn't decision. good. It wasn't good. But you know what? Sometimes you just do that. You just, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, he was there in LA actually when I got, I did a show called Peter Benches Amazon, and I was right about to declare a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, just a bunch of, I'd lost and bought a house based on a movie in Hong Kong that ended up going bankrupt, and I, yeah. I bought the house on the movie. Right. So I was screwed. Yeah. And I, needed something badly and I got this I got an offer for the show for Amazon. Yeah. And they offered they offered seventeen thousand five hundred American a week an episode, right? Nice. And I said no. <laughs> uh, my dad was right there. He was coming to golf and he was like, Are you mad? and I was right near bankruptcy. I said no. Twenty five. And I it ended up with that hour with him screaming at me and, and making way more sense than I was and I ended up with twenty two five. <laughs> Instead of them telling you to go fuck yourself, which is like the language, but which is what they should have done. Yeah. So sometimes you just know, and you, you know, wow. or I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, though. Yeah. It's really amazing. Now, what's this thing about you being a hypnotist? Is this what's going on there? Where did you hear that? I don't know. I read it somewhere. Cool. 
Well, I guess it's not true. <laughs> uh, no, it is true. Oh, it is true, Sue. Yeah. Um, okay. I just published a book, actually. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I went down to Mexico City for the, for the where we presented it. Um, it's a book I wrote with a, a former client of mine. When I was in Puerto Vallarta, I actually ran a clinic there to experiment with hypnosis. Yeah. And she's a concept artist, and we ended up uh, doing a series of experiments. Yeah. And then we co-wrote a book together about it. And uh, so that wow. went to the uh, World Book Pavilion in Paris yeah. uh, this year in March. And, uh, wow. and yeah, so I brought back 10 copies of my book. And it's a really cool book. It's, it's uh, She writes in Spanish. Yeah. I write in English, but it's, it's like a... A real artist book. It's different. Yeah. Her her pages and text are different paper, different fonts, yeah. mine are different. And it's a very strange experience to read it, wow. and it's all about her subjective experience of being mm -hmm. in all these bizarre, mm -hmm. uh, altered realities, mm -hmm. and then my objective experience, uh, objective experience of why I took this this art and this route, and what the mythological wow, background of it is. It's very. I'll give you a look. I, Wow, I'm very. I, I find that fascinating. Yeah, it's a crazy story. See, I knew yeah. there was something crazy yeah. about you. Well, a I knew it. it. <laughs> Starting two minutes. Has he ever hypnotized? Can you actually hypnotize people? Well, yeah, it's a subset of being a hypnotist. He's asked, asked and I always ignore him. You know, I, at one time I did ask in a moment of uh, weakness, but I would prefer not to allow him access to my brain. <laughs> so, yeah, we're close enough already. Yeah, 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 we don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you actually practice, though? Like, do no. you? It's just, what, fascinating for you to... That's another, it's one of those accidental things. It's just, I used to do it. I can't remember when I learned or whatever. It just, when I was in my 20s, I'd do it just to friends and, uh, you know, party tricks and stupid things like that. Uh, it's just whenever, I, I was never obsessed with it or... And then in Israel, when I was doing Sweating Bullets, uh, Saliana, who was my girlfriend, and yeah. my wife, uh, we did an experiment that went so off the rails. It's what incredible. happened? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. But... Uh, and that's when I—that's another interview. Yeah, yeah that's that's a crazy part story. two. Yeah, that, that was kind of scary that one, and, and that's when I learned how much I didn't, know. right, and that it was not something to be uh, taken lightly or yeah. messed with. Yeah, I got, I, we got in trouble with that actually, and uh, yeah. I guess it can be very scary. It, you, well, you if you don't, if you go into because <clears throat> this thing, it's not we weren't doing things like uh, you know post hypnotic suggestions of you know squawk like a chicken when I say yeah. this word. We went, which is crazy. I don't know. That's another. Thing. Yeah. But it was a, it's a very very disturbing story actually. Oh. But it you know it, it brought us very close together for one thing. Yeah. But um, it also like I said it taught me how much of the world and uh, the outer world and the inner world that I was completely unaware of. Yeah. So after <clears throat> sweat bullets uh, ended, uh, I, I went to Puerto Vallarta and, and for a year did nothing but study what the hell I had done in Israel. Wow. And I mean, study, you know, world religions, metaphysics, uh, philosophy, wow. psychology, just with that kind of figure out what I had done. Yeah. So, that is an ongoing thing. It comes in waves. Like, uh, in 2001, I left L.A. We sold a house and went to Bayard, and I opened a clinic there and started playing around again. Right. And a book came out of it. Now I don't do it, because I'm on, you know, it's just, it's yeah. maybe I'll revisit it again in, you know, five years. I don't know. When it hits me and I get interested again, I do it. Fascinating. Yeah.